just among ourselves on the stage, but uh, would like to have a discussion with all of you. So I also encourage you to come a little bit forward in the auditorium so that we will have a microphone here with uh, Shani, but then otherwise, if you just stand up and, and want to shout, we can repeat the question. <coughs> Don't raise your hands, we can't see you. Just yeah, shout. nothing actually. Is this now? Yeah. We have slides, even Anna have a thing. Who are we? Um, I don't see you really, but uh, just to get a, a, a small overview, who of you is a typographer? Okay, and who is a typeface designer? It's pretty even. Oh, more typeface designers in here. Um, yeah, that was sort of um, a discussion that we had a while ago or for a while. Is like, what legitimates us to call yourself a typeface designer? Which experience do you need to have to uh, be able to call yourself a typeface designer? Is there a standard? Is there um, an education that you are, um, need to follow to be able to call you this? And um, we're not going to introduce ourselves, really. Most of them, uh, most of you know who we are, what we do. <laughs> this is all things that we have been called during our um, uh, career. Is also a weird word to say. But, um, I mean, most of you also have the experience that uh, you did not necessarily study for what you are now occupied with, mostly. Um, most of us had uh, different backgrounds. Uh, all of us did some typeface design at some point. We all did some font engineering maybe at some point. We do some writing. But what is it, like, uh, what legitimates us to call ourselves a job title? I'm also very glad that you... Um, you, you started this conversation over the job titles and maybe the qualifications of this. Um, I just had these experiences myself that um, we had this discussion that I remember years ago that um, am I allowed to be a typeface designer if I only do bitmap fonts? Is that, called, is that typeface design? Or uh, I would never call myself a type historian even if I maybe do this now because these are the people who are over 60 or something like this. Um, um, so... Uh, can we define our professions in a way, even if we have a profession that is not regulated like other professions, like medical ones or um, law or something like this, that you have to follow different uh, or specific education and you pass a test and then you're allowed to call yourself this and this. Everyone can call themselves an artist or a writer or a designer. There's no definition of the profession itself. And I'm not sure if we can do this as an organization to, this, to define what a font engineer is doing or what, um, I don't know, um, what is uh, the creative part to be a typeface designer and not just a font engineer. Um, uh, we did a, a, last, uh, a small survey, or Bianca did a small survey to maybe get some more uh, um, info on this, if you want to talk about this. Yeah, we can do that. So I was asking on Twitter, are in the type world, where do you see yourself and what is your job title? Because I, okay, I'm very critical of this panel in general. I was like, okay, <laughs> this is a topic that might not need to be discussed on a stage at A-Type I. It might not be that important. Um, but then this discussion came up like so many times in the last few weeks. So I was like, okay, there's something behind that. So let's ask this question and see what people are replying. And I think I got over 100 replies, one actually today. Um, and they were all kinds of answers. Some didn't get the question. They only answered one part, so it was invalid. Um, but in general, you can... Uh, apply those colors to them and say like, okay, so everyone feels like they belong to one of these groups and they have a specific job title. And I uh, broke this down into this graph and you can make up a meaning from that. Um, I think what is pretty clear is that everything to your right uh, has more people in there. And I think that is what the reason is that 
um, it just involves more fields. So I think a lot of us are not just typeface designers or just font engineers. We are all doing a little bit of everything. And this is why it's so difficult for us to define our job titles. And uh, I went a bit further and um, looked at what kind of answers did people give. And there was not one valid answer to uh, people who said, I'm only doing typeface design. They didn't have a title. Um, this person was probably confused about the term font engineering. <laughs> um, yeah, people who said, I'm doing typography most of the time, said like, yeah, I'm a print designer, a web designer. And we got all kinds of answers like that. Um, it gets more answers. There was no font engineer who does typography. I think that's a niche. Um, <laughs> But we got repeated answers, um, and for some reason you can see that not many people came up with like, yeah, this is my job title, it's one term. It was always a list of things. So I'm a type designer and a typeface design teacher, uh, whatever. I think this is one of the most people. Just gonna click through that. So you see the more, um, the more overlaps we have, the more people actually responded to it. And then we had some people who gave like answers that I think reflect in a lot of us, where I think this was Ben Keel who said, oh no, maybe not. Somebody said, I wish I had a job title. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was Jose. Um, and a lot of us said that they say, I'm a type designer, but I have to give like a really long explanation of what that is. And uh, some are adjusting the answers to um, the person they are speaking to, which happens to me a lot. And um, that was Victoria. <laughs> And some, some people just gave up on a title. Um, I was wondering when I saw that almost everyone said several things, that if, if it's, I mean, they're also really related compared to other, like more exotic, exotic fields that you could have overlaps. And is it maybe also that it's, it's necessary to do several things and we cannot just do just one thing or be satisfied with this? Because we saw in your presentation also that it's actually getting more specific and not just one person can do anything or everything. So I think we have more roles to fill, but is it just because we're so few people that people fill several of these roles or also that we want to do this because if you're a type designer, it's maybe also important to do some desi graphic design work to be like, I don't know, to have the connection to the user or be inspired by, or what, what is your motivation to maybe name several things? Well, I guess some are, are stemming out of necessity, so maybe I can't make enough money being a typeface designer, so I also need to do some graphic design, mm. or I just am interested in both fields. Um, but I think um, most of those answers where people said, I am a type designer, but also a graphic designer came from, like, it depends who I'm talking to. If I'm traveling to the US and the border agent is asking me what I'm doing, then I probably don't say typeface designer because then I'm going to stand there for half an hour. Explaining it. Explaining that. I think, too, that the nature of type design um, or people who are interested in, in letter forms in general, um, there's kind of a compulsion to follow the length of the string. So it's not enough just to kind of know maybe this level of something, you feel that it's maybe not authentic enough. So you have to kind of keep researching and, and do, uh, then that's where you become a, an historian and you become a writer and you become a graphic designer and you, you learn about type or, or Python scripting mostly because you feel you have to understand how those things work in order to apply those lessons to your own work. So um, I, for me, I went to Cooper Type um, but I don't really design typefaces, but I needed, I, for myself, needed to learn as much as I could about how to make them, I felt, in order to be able to 
kind of participate in a bigger way in communities. And, and you feel that that also was required to to be confident to call yourself a type designer? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. DJ, what was the moment where you started calling yourself one? When I was in college, I was making fonts. So, uh, <laughs> but I mean, but I think like what we call ourselves and what we actually do on a day-to-day -day basis may not always be exactly the same thing. Like I spend way more time on some days like writing emails and walking my dogs, but I still call myself a type designer. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, but yeah, no, I mean, I think that, and, and I, I think that I, I want to make that term, at least for type designer, to make it accessible, because there's so, like, like, there are so many more type designers and people who can legitimately call themselves one now than, than when I started 10 years ago, because of the education programs and just like the general interest in the accessibility of tools. Or do we need something, uh, apply something like a tax office uh, that defines professionalism and hobbyism no, in the that's sense? that's a very German thought, I think. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't think we need that. Yeah, well, not not the good road then. I mean, I, I noticed talking to people who have dab who have dabbled that they um, are like, well, I'm not I'm not a real type designer. It's like almost like it's exoticized or something. And it's like I don't want to. I want my I want what I do to be understood and accessible. And I don't want people to think that it's like an other thing that you need to like. It's not a dark art. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point. Like, do you need to make money to be able to call yourself a type designer? Do you need to make money out of it? I don't know. Does someone else need to use your type before that font even exists? Yeah, do you have to release a typeface on, in your, with your name on it to be a typeface designer? Or does someone have to buy a license? Oh my god, it? we have more questions than yeah. answers. <laughs> it's interesting, too, because um, it, it kind of ends up creating these, like, silos when we... Uh, isolate our, our own roles in some ways and I think that can be fine and as we were talking about we, we kept saying do we need to have this panel do we have to have this discussion but one of my concerns are onward but one of the things I noticed is that there's this like level of intimidation particularly with younger people and trying to figure out their own paths and and where to go with things and if you don't if you don't understand who else Uh, does a similar thing, or you can't kind of say, I want to be like DJR when I'm uh, a grown-up or something. You know, you, you need to be able to kind of see what your, your path is in life. And if we, we create these kind of silos of, like, only I do this one particular thing, it's a little harder and more intimidating, I think, for younger people to understand uh, where to go from there, particularly, like, for underrepresented groups. Like, who are you, who are you looking to... Um, To, to see what kind of career you want. Yeah, and I think this, dis this discussion is especially relevant for younger people who are entering the field more than I, I think the veterans, well, yeah, they, they don't want no job title or they don't have the question about they it anymore. They don't want other people to have that job title, uh, maybe, yeah. sometimes. <laughs> um. So, uh, I, 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 so, so I, I started as a young person at, at Font Bureau and um, I did not have a job title there. And I think that it actually like emboldened me to do things outside of maybe what I was originally hired to do. So I was hired to be a designer, but I also kind of, you know, dove into programming and I, I had a tech support stint and I did, I kind of covered things. And I think that those skills that I built doing those things that were not in whatever job title I would have had um, helped me, you know, manage a foundry today. I think it's always the problem, the, the moment that you need business cards made. Yeah. That's like, what are you putting on this? Or is it a list or a range? I also like what you showed with the, like, um, Veronica, uh, and uh, you say that um, the, the, the film, or no, what is it, the gaming industry classified it with, like, junior designer or, like, senior or um, that if we classified it a little more, I think it wouldn't be as scary for a 21-year-old to call himself a typeface designer if they are maybe a, an, I don't know, a what do you say? Junior type designer, hmm? a junior or something. That Although I, that was on the Fun <laughs> website and it was up there for, like, years and I, until I asked to get it down. <laughs> After how many years? I, I, I don't know, but it, you know, it's just like nobody remembered because we didn't use job titles. Yeah, but maybe what's your experience or especially like your opinion, I would love to hear or um, 
your opinion of does this even matter what we're discussing or um, should we should we not bother with these problems? We have a hand up Is over there here. no we have Jason? Some hands up. Oh, good. Oh, Hi, I'm, I'm John Downer, and I just came in when uh, a familiar quote was up there on the screen. Why was that not attributed? What? Oh, um, I, I, I didn't want to make this a personal discussion. Okay. Um, I'm the guy who talked about sign painting and dabblers, and uh, I come from a, a tradition in which an apprentice enters the field as an adult, works for 10,000 hours, under constant supervision without counting practice time on your own. You become a journeyman uh, after you sit for the exam. Then, after a number of years in a shop where you learn all disciplines, you become a mechanic and only then a master. And now, everybody on Instagram is a master sign painter. And th these are the distinctions I was trying to clarify. Yeah, that's also what I hinted at, that their professions are also uh, like the apprenticeship and master model that is much more regulated. But for design, I think that that isn't there and there's no, there's no um, final exam that you have to take. You don't even need to study. So that's, I think it's just not uh, defined when we are allowed to call ourselves what. Um, Jason and then we'll see. Um, well, I think it's a similar problem that the web industry has and in that and the problem with not having any titles is that it's, because I've never had a good one. I mean, it's always been a challenge for me, having done lots of different things. But it, when you try and communicate to somebody outside our industry, that's when it starts to become difficult to encapsulate the kinds of things. And, and I'll, I don't want to say necessarily put a value on it, but give a sense of um, mastery, I think, is, is, a good, is a good way to put it, but also um, the authority that kind of comes with it. I think it's an interesting point as well because you, there's a distinction between inwards and outwards facing. So how do you identify yourself is one thing, but how do you present yourself to a client is another one. And Victoria's um, comment was actually spot on where she said like, okay, well, if I want to get a job, I call myself something else. Can I, sorry. Um, sorry, um, my, my question is not really what job titles can do for each one of us individually and how, when we are allowed to call ourselves a phone developer or um, a typeface designer, but what can job, job titles do for our industry as a collective process? I think that we need to look to the inside of, of our industry and see that the job title is also a tool for us to, not to just classify ourselves, but just to allow ourselves to say, yes, I know how to do this. And I could become much more specific than you were in your, in your, um, in your graphic. Because let's say, yes, I'm a, type a typeface designer, but I am, or I am a, really a font developer or a font engineer, or I write just open type code, or I write just open type codes for, let's say, Bengali. So you can, you have circles inside circles inside circles. And that level of specification, I think, can serve to the purpose of us um, getting connected between um, people who need to hire people. But would that be in a job title, or would it be just a list of things that you do or are capable of? It's also important from a, for a larger perspective, and, and this is obviously a, a problem across many different occupations, but if you're trying to negotiate a salary and you've got X number of years of experience, if that is, hasn't translated, like in, in graphic design, if, you, if you're going for, say, a, a design director position, uh, understanding you know, those companies who might be hiring for a design director want you to have been a design director you know, for two, three years or something, and they, they specify that in the job description. Um, but if you have been working your ass off in a place that has no titles, how then do you kind of say, you know, th because the problem is not that, uh, that there are no titles or there are some titles, it's that it's inconsistent. 
I like the, uh, I like, Bianca, I like your distinction between inward facing and outward facing because how we define ourselves, that's interesting. I call myself an editor and typographer because it pretty much expands to everything that I do. But what is the, but I don't put any job title on my business card. It's just contact information. But what a business, or sorry, a, a title really has only two purposes as far as I can see, to make us money or to give us credibility and respectability. Is there any other purpose? It's, so it's all outward facing, essentially. Um, John, and then... um, this provides a great opportunity for me to uh, remind people that we're hiring at the moment. Uh, and, <laughs> and part of the process of hiring someone is to come up with a job description that, that generally involves a job title. You know, what is it we're hiring someone to do? Um, this got particularly complicated when uh, the immigration lawyers who we contacted advised that we needed to post the job on the Canada Job Bank, which turns out to consist of drop-down lists of job titles from which we had to select one. Um, font maker, which was my kind of choice, wasn't on there anywhere. Interestingly, um, monotype operator is. Um, it's, it's, it's a very old list. Um, so oh, another aspect of this outward-looking thing is if, if an industry does have standard job titles, it means you can kind of fit into someone else's bureaucratic notion of what jobs are. It would also just, just FYI, it would also be nice to hear from some younger, maybe more diverse <laughs> people. <laughs> just saying. Old women? Well, yes. we quickly do the old pieces. Of okay, old game. guys first. <laughs> Go ahead. Can I? Okay, I, I think it's, um, you know, it was already sort of mentioned as sort of, well, what's your title? So it depends who's asking and why. And so it depends on the situation and, and also the discussion about business cards. What do you put under your name on the business card? And, and I'm thinking back over the decades, you know, depending on who asked me, there was one period in the late 80s where somebody would say, ask me what I did, and I'd say, I'm a type designer. And at that time, it was sort of uh, type designer. People design. Doesn't that just come from the printer? You know. And so you always. It, it was that thing. Say type designer, and then lengthy explanation on what that means. And it's less necessary now to do that because a lot more people know what a type designer is, or they think they know. Um, but I, I think something that goes on the education side too is that. So we have a department of visual communications at the university where this young lady over here studied. And you say, well, you study visual communications, and, but I don't know very many people who call themselves a visual communicator when they come out. So it used to be called graphic design, and everybody came out called themselves a graphic designer. So if you study law, you're a lawyer. If you study medicine, you're a doctor. If you study visual communications, um, what are you? Hey, um, man, I, I think that job titles exist on a spectrum. And I think that, like, you get to be what the fuck you want to be. <laughs> the, the notion of labels serves people that are at the top because those labels are the ones that people at the top are seeking for new peers. And, so, you know, that there's a hierarchy in place. This notion that we have to be one thing or another is disturbing. Uh, the notion that we have to define ourselves internally is very disturbing because I think that if you want to be amongst peers, that's a decision that you choose to sort of identify peers in everybody. And if we want the structures and the business to stay the same, then job titles are a great way to keep it exactly the same. If you want to change the industry, I think you have to be willing to accept a lot of people where they want to be, trained or otherwise, uh, inspired or otherwise, and ultimately, the market decides if we have jobs at all. <laughs> and we talk to the market from a values perspective. If people don't value typographers, there will be none. <laughs> if people value editors, there'll be plenty. You know, it's, it's, it's really about this external, this external conversation is about what does the market want us to define our profession as and how do we serve our profession best? Not each other and not ourselves, but our profession the best. But ultimately, this notion that we have to 
uh, be full of labels doesn't serve either young people, diverse people, people from other backgrounds, and also people that want to practice design in very diverse ways. I think it does if it gives them leverage, um, younger people and more diverse people. Titles can be empowering as well. They're not just traps. I, I want to... Okay. So I work in a business of 7,000. I'm the only person in the company who has a type background, who has a font background and a connection to the community. Um, so with that, did everyone hear that bit? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Cool. Um, so with that communication and the language behind your job title of how you describe yourself suddenly becomes very important. Um, and it's very, very difficult with that to communicate clearly what you do. So assumptions about things like, Font, so what is a font? We kind of touched upon that. Um, and people assume often it's to do with styling and the association between that and software. And then again, things like hierarchy. So I think if you look across many different businesses, um, the levels of hierarchy and indeed so like looking at different locations, those levels of hierarchy differ greatly. So we look at our India office and what a designer there is actually more of a kind of management level, whereas in the UK, um, obviously, a designer is very much sort of middle level, you know, and you progress up to senior and then manager and director and further beyond that. So there's a real kind of discrepancy between different businesses and that. So I think it is a real tool to communicate. And I think looking outwardly, so looking more of the kind of client side, it's really difficult to communicate well. But it's funny in an industry uh, with so many tiny businesses or um, people who work alone. I mean, if you're, if you're by yourself, would you ever call yourself a junior designer? No, of course you're the CEO of the company. <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's a little silly. I mean, it's totally not exactly that same thing if you're in a hierarchical uh, large business where you have to have these distinctions. But for, for two people, you, of course, you're the CEO of your company. When you say, yeah, I wish I had a job, oh, 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 okay. Well, we have more questions. Um, it's not so much a question as um, I'd like to add to what was actually just said as well. Um, I agree with um, not having to necessarily always put yourself into a drawer, um, but it does help to explain what you do um, when you talk to people outside of our industry. So I like the point, of, um, the point you were making um, over there, but um, you summed up with, um, we need to think about what's best for our industry. And what's best for our industry sometimes is to follow hierarchies that somebody outside recognizes. And I'm specifically not talking about what you do, but at what rank you get to do it. And if we're talking about diversity, um, the design agency I work at, we have um, a lot of clients, big businesses. The people that um, make decisions there are at least twice my age. They're definitely male, they're definitely white. and. Um, they want to speak to their equal, and they don't want a five foot three woman, half their age, coming in with a business card that says communication designer. Um, they will not speak to you. Even just having design director or art director there, and I can say that from experience, really helps. It also helps to wear high heels, which is really sad, but that's another thing to just have that business card, and it's really, really valuable. And I think it's valuable specifically if we talk about our industry and diverse people in our industry um, talking to more traditional setups. But think of the, pipe, think of the patriarchal value that you are enforcing by saying that your business card needs to be a certain way. If you have no leverage. For a minute, if you challenge that power structure just for a minute, then you don't blame your business card and maybe... I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to challenge it, but not at the cost of not getting my design through at a client, because my design might be really good, and if it just it suffers from my face, or from my gender, or from my business card, then hell no, I'll dress up exactly the client wants. The people who should be challenging the patriarchy are the men themselves, not just women and people of color. It's, it's their job to dismantle that, not just ours. <laughs> Is 
Is it time? I think uh, two things can be true. Absolutely, I agree with you. Hey there, I'm the typical five foot minority, double minority actually, in many many designing places. So I'm just wondering, like, I think what someone who was talking. Hi. Um, <laughs> so I was just wondering. So why are you putting that we have to conform to those stereotypes? Because. Everywhere I've been working is true. I've always been the only woman and the youngest person and the only Asian person in a very white dominated male industry. And I'm just wondering why not step in and actually do something about it or? Um, I, I do want to actually add one thing to this as someone who hires people and gives them a title um, because it's something that I wanted to change in, in, our, in our company was to hire people and call them a digital designer because I didn't want to draw a distinction between a visual communicator, a graphic designer, a UX designer because they have to do all of those things, even typography. And, and it's important to me to, to take that barrier away but it was pointed out to me by one of the people that works for me that for her, in her career path, it was important to have certain things part of her job resume. And, and so it's not fair for me to take that away because I simply want to change our culture because I would like to be able to do that. But just recognizing the fact that it's not the only place she's going to work. She's going to go somewhere else. And it's, it's my responsibility to make sure that she can do that and keep progressing forward. And th that was a, an aha moment for me when she brought that up in, in one of our conversations, that I was, in trying to break that down, in some ways I was doing her a disservice in not giving her the, the tools to progress in her career. So they're, they're loaded. I mean, you can't just throw it away. I, I just think there's some real challenges there. Yeah, you see it with the slide that we were going to touch exactly on this outside inside view that uh, necessarily among us, we don't have to differentiate between this, but if you go somewhere else and want to uh, sell your idea or make a point, then something like a fancy job title can help, especially if you're a little, uh, you look younger or more junior than you maybe actually are. Bianca, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I was just gonna check, we still have time. Because I think somebody over there wanted to say something. I saw her hand at one point. Anyone? Maybe not Maybe anymore. one, two questions, one long or two short questions we can still take and otherwise we can always also uh, continue over coffee break discussions. How, also, how many of you have made up your own title that nobody else has? <laughs> what, to shout them out. Yeah, we'll you're a typewriter? Clubmaster. Design nerd, font master. Oh, yes. I, um, I have actually been struggling a little bit about this, is when you do a work and how you get paid, because uh, uh, I don't want to do that, but sometimes it gets like the value of my work, gets like even with how much I get paid. So that means that sometimes I might feel that I'm not as valuable because I get less pay, but that is actually not the case. It's just maybe the client that doesn't have the, enough money. And I think that also there is a huge difference between uh, titles. I come from Sweden, and titles is not that big, and we try to move away from them. But we have noticed that there is a cultural difference when we speak to people in the United States because they have their title connected to their paycheck. And we don't have that. And once again, it all comes down to the money. So I think if you put the title to your paycheck and you put your paycheck to your value, the title is very important. But if you don't do that, it's not that important, your title. And uh, I would say I use every title I can find. <laughs> good answer. I think this is really good advice to 
this is really good advice to, to end the discussion, at least on the stage, and continue outside or um, over the next two days. Yeah, I okay. think maybe we can conclude that as an industry, we just drop titles all together, and then everyone will be very happy. Okay. Thank you for Thank your you. attention and participation, and see you outside.